You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. I'm now joined by Joe Highland from Irish Country Meats, who picked up both the Manufacturer of the Year Award and the Exporter of the Year Award at the recent Wexford Business Awards. Joe, you might start by telling me a bit about your own background, please. Because I'm originally from County Leash. I came here to Wexford in 1992 as general manager of the then Avonmore um, lamb factory here. The business had been closed for a number of months and uh, we reopened the business in April of 1992. And I've been here in a management capacity ever since. I suppose the things that have changed are that when in 1992 we had 45 or 50 people working for us today, we have just short of 270. So it's a totally different business and totally different challenges. But nonetheless, um, um, we're very, very proud of what we've achieved here uh, from this particular base in County Wexford. And Joe, tell me, how did you come to working in the meat industry first day? Well, I think I I had no designs in working in the meat industry, Carl. Uh, It happened like many good or bad stories by totally by chance. Back in the mid 80s, uh, I was very much encouraged by all of the the positive commentary that there was about the opening opening up of the European market and the market access that that would afford to Ireland, uh, the need for the skill up from an Irish perspective and to to speak the the appropriate languages. Uh, And I was lucky to be chosen to uh, join uh, what was called an an export orientation program. In fact, I think it was called a European orientation program. I was sponsored by CBF at the time and lived in France for uh, for most of uh, for some of 1986 and all of 1987. And I returned uh, at that time at a time when, as I said, there there were lots of opportunity in the system. And uh, I applied for a number of positions on my return, and I was lucky to have been chosen by the Goodman organisation to work for them. Uh, in a sales and marketing capacity. And uh, for a period of five years, I worked very, very happily within that organisation in a number of positions, finishing up as head of their sheep meat operations in Ireland. And what were the main three learning points that you picked up in Goodman's? Well, I think the Goodman organisation is a tremendous academy for, for anybody who has come and worked in the meat industry because the, the key things were cost and uh, cost and opportunity uh, and the relentless pursuit of both. And, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole Goodman meat model, uh, meat management model has, has today is, is as strong today as it was back then. And I think it's, it's fairly true to say that Goodman and his philosophy, um, you know, has been uh, very, very, I mean, the leadership that the Goodman organization provided to the wider meat industry has been very, very strong. And uh, I think we, we, we owe Larry Goodman a tremendous dep- depth of gratitude in this country for, for the, 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 the uh, for the vision that he had then and for the leadership that he has offered right right throughout the years um, in the uh, in the context of, of meat processing. Now, he has remained largely beef uh, and, of course, um, laterally, I have become fairly, fairly um, singularly focused in terms of the lamb um, uh, sector. Uh, but nonetheless, we meet him in, in all of the markets we're in and his model is as strong today as it was then. And the focus on Irish Country Meats. Tell me a bit about the company, please. Well, Irish Country Meats, uh, the name comes from Glanbia or Avonmore, as it was in, in 1992. Uh, it, it was, the, it was the, the name for the, the Glanbia meat business that was beef, lamb and pork. Uh, we, uh, in the sheep meat division, were lucky enough to retain the name uh, once uh, the business was sold uh, to the Slaney Foods Group in 2000. And... Uh, we became then within the Slaney Foods organization the specialist sheep meat processing division of Slaney Foods and we retained the name Irish Country Meats and the name Irish Country Meats has a strong resonance right around Europe as being uh, as being good um, uh, reliable processors of, of, of lamb meat and, and, and we are regarded I hope or I would like to think as being very progressive marketeers of lamb meat both in Ireland and in the wider European marketplace. You mentioned earlier that the business has grown from a staff of 40 up to a staff of 270 over the past 20 years. What else has changed within the business over that period? Well, that's been a fairly significant change in its own right. Uh, and of course, I suppose parallel to growing staff numbers, I mean, there's been a very significant investment in our business over 
uh, over the last 20 years or so, and particularly here in, in, in the site in Camolan. I'm very, very happy to acknowledge the, the significant support and investment that we've, we've gotten from the Slaney Foods Board and from the Slaney Foods Director. Tell me, who are your customers? Well, I suppose the, the ones that would be obvious to you and the ones that you would recognise, Carl, are, are the ones here on the Irish market. And I mean, we, we number most of the Irish retailers as being customers of ours. We, we trade with... Uh, the independents, we trade with the discounters, we trade with other key retailers. We, we're listed pretty much with most of uh, the Irish retailers and when you move off the island then uh, we have a, a reasonable presence in the UK and um, a significant presence in France. We trade in Germany. You're aware that we acquired a business in, in, in Liège in Belgium last year so therefore uh, we have a fairly uh, we have a fairly strong position uh, in the Belgian market, and uh, we we have key relations with, with people in places like Holland, uh, the, the 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 Nordics, uh, the Baltics in 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 in, in some circumstances, and um, not so much Southern Europe because the lamb that we process here is not suitable for for Southern Europe, uh, and of course the 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 more east. Eastern Europe, you travel, the less interested they are in lamb because they are not traditional eaters of lamb meat in, in those in those particular markets. We have about twenty six uh, listed markets that we trade in. Of course, one of the opening markets and a market that has got a lot of uh, commentary in the current year has been the Chinese market, and uh, we have been for for some ten years now uh, traveling in that market and and selling products in that market, and we have some very very good business and good relationships down there. And from an image perspective across Europe, what's the image like of Irish sheep meat? The image of Irish uh, meat generally is very, very good. Take, for example, the uh, the Belgian market, which was one of the attractions to to open a business in Belgium or for to buy a business in Belgium. Pretty much most decent restaurants that you go to in Belgium have Irish beef listed as Irish beef and branded as Irish beef. So that tells its own story. Uh, we in Ireland are very, very fortunate to have a positive image and reputation right across Europe. Uh, in some markets, is stronger than others. So Irish um, uh, livestock production and the image of Ireland, uh, a pollution-free, green, uh, lots of rain and lots of greenness, I mean, is, 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 is out there. And, and I think we, both as practitioners and from a marketing perspective, I think we work that image particularly well uh, on behalf of Irish uh, production output. I often hear that there's a shortage of lamb in the Irish market for export. Is that correct? For export, possibly. Uh, you'll be aware that from an Irish market perspective that we produce, uh, probably uh, we, we consume 40% of our, of our total production here uh, on the island. And I think uh, consumers listening to, to this particular show should be, should be thanked for their, their absolute strong and committed support to, to buying Irish and to supporting Irish produced lamb and indeed beef. Um, therefore, we export 60% of our total output. Uh, I think that there are more opportunities uh, if there were more production. Uh, but then there are views that, that suggest that when there was substantially more production, that prices weren't as good as they are today. And I think we have to find the correct balance there. And, and uh, certainly from, from an ICM perspective, we have capacity to process substantially more sheep than we are processing. And, and uh, we would like to think that over time that we will rebuild uh, the Irish um, lamb output uh, from, a, from, a, from a producer perspective to, to uh, back up to the levels that it knew uh, when we were producing about 3 million lambs per year. Today we're, we're producing 2.1, 2.2 2 million and uh, I'd like to see that improve. By how much would you like to see it improve by before you think it would actually have a negative impact on price? I, I think I think that price is key, and I think that I think it, it should improve based on price uh, because producers um, have had uh, mixed fortunes uh, from uh, from a, a lamb production point of view, and farmers listing will will remember that the the, the you know there there have been uh, a number of years when when farmer uh, from farmer incomes were, were were very very poor from from uh, from the, their lamb enterprise. I'd like to think in the last three years when prices have increased by about thirty percent. I'd like to think that there's some stability in the new level of lamb pricing. Uh, of course, um, at the end of the day, the consumer dictates most of, of, of where prices are at from a commodity perspective. And uh, clearly in, 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 in Ireland and Europe and in Europe generally, the economic recession is not helping uh, the, the consumption of lamb. So therefore, we have to get that balance right. I'd like to think that we can rebuild our flock uh, our output north of two and a half million over the next uh, uh, over the next two years, and I mean it would be it would be great 
uh, it would be great to think that we we might build back up to the to the to the to the three million at over a five six or seven year horizon. All of it will be about how successful we are as marketeers in getting niche markets for Irish lamb product. And uh, we Irish country meats and we in Irish country meats are very committed to that particular process. Is that not the responsibility of Borbia? Yes, it is. Uh, but Borbia, of course, have, have, have a role that is, is non-commercial. Uh, so it's fine to be all of the marketing tools that they have. And they're a very, very effective body of people. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the role of, of, of buying and selling um, lamb commodity, uh, buying, buying lamb commodity and selling lamb finished products is, is, is a processor role. And Irish country meats clearly see that we have a, a very, I mean, our our role in life is, is to ensure that our model works first and foremost and uh, and that our farmers are adequately rewarded for producing uh, what they produce. And uh, that's something that we work on fairly, fairly hard. And that's something we've been working very, very hard on over the last 20 years. Give me an outline of the current sheep farm market out there. Is it made up of a small number of large flocks or vice versa? Well, I, I think at at some point one of the it was suggested that we that we had as many as forty seven thousand sheep farmers. If you go back ten years, uh, a figure a reduced figure came back to somewhere in the mid thirty thousands, and today I think we have somewhere between twenty seven and thirty thousand sheep producers. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm not more specific on the numbers, but one thing that I can be specific on, Carl, is that uh, we remain very much a traditional uh, farming, uh, um, extensive as opposed to being intensive, and the average flock size is still only 100 sheep. Now, that has a that has a certain attraction from a marketing perspective in that we articulate uh, to the market that Ireland has remained very much a traditional a traditional lamb producing country. Having said that, it's it's quite a challenge from a logistical point of view in terms of, of getting the lambs to our factory for processing. Uh, it's a big it's a big job and, and to keep the lines efficient and to keep everything moving as it should. I mean, procuring lambs in small numbers is is is, is a challenge. But nonetheless it's 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 a big, big, big part of the strength of our proposition for to be able to communicate to our customers that we remain very much a traditional entity. Has Irish Country Meats got much dialogue with the IFA? I think yes is the answer to that. Uh, the IFA are a very effective representative structure for, for uh, farmers in Ireland uh, across all species. Um, and uh, they're a very well-structured organisation and they're a very focused organisation. Uh, we work closely with them on a whole range of policy agendas. Of course, uh, we've had our ups and downs uh, with the IFA and we've had our little little battles with the IFA, but uh, we fully respect uh, the job they do and we are fully committed to working closely with them on a whole range of producer issues uh, and without their input and without their coordination and without their facilitation, I think, uh, you know, the producer, the whole producer-processor relationship wouldn't be as strong as it is. What have you seen to be the major challenges for your own business over the past 10 years? Well, we've had we've had lots of challenges. Um, and I suppose the modern thing to say is challenges that, that were that, that within which there were many opportunities. Um, we've had a disease-free 20 years uh, since, since, since I came in here in 1992. Uh, our nearest neighbours and biggest competitors, uh, the UK, have had a combination of foot and mouth crises and uh, we've had dioxin crises in northern europe uh, we we've had uh, obviously the bse um, specter hanging over uh, the, the the beef uh, sector during all of that time uh, ireland happily and 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 please god will remain the case uh, we're not affected to any great extent by that the foot and mouth crisis presented market access opportunities that didn't exist before and um, you know, and there was a there was a obviously a positive spin off from that. Um, so I suppose that some of the the biggest challenge um, and the challenges that one has over the years is 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 obviously matching uh, your production, the production available to you with with, with customer needs and expectations. Uh, our business is broken out over uh, three specific areas. We 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 work very very closely with with retailers all over Europe, and we number. Most of the major retailers in Europe as customers, uh, and in many cases direct customers, uh, we work very, very closely with the food service sector. We have a number of food service partners, of course, off the island as well, and and uh, our mix of retail and food service is complementary, uh, and uh, we work those two sec sectors particularly well. Of course, you also have then spot trading and the wholesale trade, and of course we have an element of that as well. We are shifting increasingly uh, to being a 
uh, to, to, we're shifting and our ambition is to move from being uh, what is regarded as a, an abattoir or a meat factory to a food factory. And in many respects, uh, the thing that I'm most proud of since I came in here is to, is to look at the range and for to, 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 to observe uh, and to, to some extent adjudicate over the range of products that we produce and, and many of them of which are priced here to go on shelves uh, in supermarkets all over Europe. It's a tremendously proud thing to, 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 to see. And there is a lot of logistical challenges associated with that, but nonetheless, it's, it's, uh, it's what we do. And, and uh, uh, great tr uh, credit to, to our team here who, over the years, who have built these competencies and who have built these markets and uh, who, are, who have helped the company to, 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 come to, the, to arrive at the position we find ourselves in today. During the boom, Joe, did the availability of labour cause any issue? Well, we had huge issues um, procuring labour here in, uh, during the boom period and, and uh, the, the famous Celtic Tiger uh, worked, uh, worked, very, uh, worked against us uh, in the context of, of, of finding um, appropriate Irish labour uh, for to work in our production plants and even to work in, in, the, in our broader administrative and management team. Um, I, I remember days coming in here and, and uh, the production line would only be half full and uh, you know there was a, a huge number of people who were not turning up, just literally not turning up for work and with no explanation as to why they, wouldn't turn, as why they didn't turn up for work. Um, happily, uh, those days, I mean, most of those, most of the 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 the, the uh, opportunities I suppose as uh, at the time were were in the building sector. We had people leaving as wholesale for to go work on buildings and 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 uh, and other related industries. Um, now uh, we obviously were were we were forced to look at other alternatives, and we have a number of people here working. We have at least seven or eight different nationalities here working in ICM. And I'm happy to say that we have a very stable and a very, very good, hard-working workforce uh, working here today. Joe, you managed to scoop two awards for Irish Country Meats at last week's Wexford Business Awards. You picked up the Wexford Manufacturer of the Year Award and also the International Export Award of the Year. Congratulations on both of those. What does winning those awards mean to you? I think the fact that, uh, I think the fact that Wexford were recognising a business in Wexford for ICM was, was important. Uh, and uh, it, we we got particular pleasure out of winning both awards. Um, clearly, as a manufacturer, with, the, with with the number of employees we have, as I said earlier, two hundred and seventy people, we're, we're we're up there as one of the largest employers in in County Wexford. Uh, and as an inter, as an international exporter, I think uh, our 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 trail is 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 wide and 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 um, robust. And uh, I'm glad that the, the, the judges of the awards were uh, recognised that and, and, and duly awarded us both awards. So I, I think in summary, we were extremely pleased and chuffed to have been selected locally and to have been recognised locally. We've had some awards at national and international level, and uh, this one was particularly pleasing. And future plans for Irish Country Meets, Joe, what are they? Well, I think the biggest plan is to stay alive, uh, Carl. Um, and sustain the momentum that's in our business. Um, as I said to you, we, we've had a, we've had a good um, we've had a good innings in terms of business development. Uh, we've had perhaps a lot of fortune uh, working for us. We certainly have a substantially uh, a, 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 a very very strong group of people working here, and and uh, in particular a number of managers who are here almost as long as I am myself. And. Um, the ambition for Irish Country Meats uh, now is a group with three locations. I didn't mention the fact that we have a, a factory in Navan County Meath, and I, did, I think I did mention the fact that we 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 bought uh, we bought uh, we have forty colleagues now working for us in Liège in Belgium, uh, where we process and retail pack uh, a range of lamb products for uh, for the Belgian and and Northern European um, marketplace. So our ambition, quite simply is to become the leading lamb processor in Europe. And we would like to, to, be, uh, to be a key actor uh, on the international stage and regarded as being uh, the lamb specialist of Europe. And that if, you, if, if as a buyer or, or if as a, a user of lamb product, we would like to be instantly associated with that opportunity. And we would like to be top of mind in terms of who to contact if you want a particular service under a lamb meat heading all of which, of course, is here anchored in Wexford uh, and anchored in Camolan. Well, Joe, it's been a fascinating interview. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you continued success with Irish Country Meats. 
You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.